whether you're hosting a brunch or making a family dinner, here with a fun DIY to let everyone know what's on the menu is Maria. I mean, the idea of making dinner throughout the week can yes. be overwhelming. Yes. And you know me, I'm a major planner and I love to meal you prep. Are? Oh, I mean, I'm <laughs> very surprising. So I love to meal prep. And one of my biggest things that I've started doing in my house is writing it all out to take away the question, what's for dinner tonight from my family? And also because I'm really trying to get Grant to eat more food. He's very plain with what he eats and I want him to eat more vegetables so I'm really trying to get him involved in the meal planning and to hopefully getting him to eat some healthier foods as well and liking the whole process of making dinner. I love the concept of this. I also love the you know how you've actualized it. It looks so great. It would be great in our house for sure. Okay so what's, what's the first step that we need to do? Okay so the first step is really figuring out your sizing. So for instance figure out where you really want something like this in your home so you can see the sizing that we have over here and we're in our dining room. Okay. And okay. so for instance instance, I would have mine maybe in my kitchen and going to, to figure out which wall you want it in your house. But with that, I went to the craft supply store and I found that, because I wanted these on chalkboard so it was easily changeable, yeah, obviously. I love that. And it's fun for kids too. And so also, you, we, this, these were the sizings that I found. So depending on if you wanted five days a week, if you wanted oh. seven days a week, you could really go with that. So for me, uh, because I wanted it in a smaller space, because uh, my house is not massive, I went with this. So these are great little chalkboards and I figured out out my sizing based on how these chalkboards fit onto different pieces Beautiful. of wood. Beautiful, so you know how, how big the base plate exactly. needs to be based on the size of the chalkboards yes. that you chose. Exactly. Uh, very good, now I see that you got pine here. Is pine the best wood that you wanna use for this? I feel like I love using pine. One, it's so simple, to, yes. it's, it's a softer wood so it's easier to drill in for someone like mm -hmm. possibly with me where I wanna go in and, and just, you know, make the all the marks that I can and it's, yep. it's not hard for me to do. I guess that's the best right. way to put that. And you can stain it, you can paint it. It's very customizable for however your aesthetics are in your house. It's also inexpensive, right? It's extremely inexpensive. Yeah. Yes, and then thank if you, you stain it, you got these great grain in here too. So it looks rich and Okay, colored, beautiful. Yes. All right, so let's, is it time to add some color? It is, so you can see I stained and painted. So you can see over there I have, I painted it white and I stained the chalkboards because the chalkboards are wood as well. Right. And so this is just, a, I used an acrylic craft paint for the white but you could make it any color you want right. I keep thinking this would be great for a teacher to have five days a week and put up the lunch menu and do primary colors I think that would be so much fun your mind works I know. Well, we I have a five-year-old <laughs> so it's frequently uh, on my mind okay so <laughs> here is the stain and you could do this uh, with any kind of stain you like really or you could paint these so I just have this on here and you do a little bit of this and Cameron, I do want to say too that if you did want to get in these nook and nooks and crannies, yeah. you would want to cover it with like a painter's tape sure. because uh, then you won't have to worry about leaving that mark like I yeah, just right. did. And, you, and yeah, but or you can just do along the outside. I do want to say that I love the contrast you went with like an espresso or a darker it's stain. Espresso. It is espresso. It is espresso. So there you go. Against the white, I love that contrast look. So yes. it really makes these pop. You could so just do well that and done. it's as simple as that. Okay, very good. So we've got our color on the baseboard or the backboard and then also mm -hmm. on the chalkboard. Okay. Uh, now it comes to making sure that they're spaced evenly across here. And by the way, that it's sort of like a gallery wall. Have you ever hung it pictures is, like that? Yes. You gotta make sure the spacing's right. So what do you recommend? Okay, so this is what I ended up doing because I have my days of the week up there. So let me get this for the I didn't write already on. Okay, so yeah. we have this over here. So you can see the spacing that I decided worked for me was yeah. about an inch apart. Okay. So what I ended up doing because I have the days of the week up there. So for instance, let's say Monday. Um, so this this would be my center and I'm only screwing in the center and these are little knobs um, you can just get these at sure. the hardware store or craft supply store and the reason why the center one is important one because it's going to center it yep. but two because we're going to screw these in so that the weight of this is on there and you don't have to worry about it because I thought I could probably glue it which you probably could because these are not heavy yeah but just for safety purposes I thought that right. one and that's the only one we have to worry about screwing in and I love and when we have power tools in exactly. the DIY so thank exactly. you for doing that. You're welcome. Welcome. That was for and me. so they're about seven inches apart from um, each center of Got the board. It. And you figure that out and yeah. it's spaced nice and evenly. And that's going to depend on whatever board that you have okay. or whatever size chalkboard. I'll so hold you can this see. down. Thank you. I'm going to pre over the this edge is, of the table. This is marked. And so these, I'm just going to, I'm going to pre-drill this for Cameron. You can see all Beautiful. the way through. And again, the, um, the here. knobs kind of uh, screw onto a screw. So you'd want to put the screw in mm -hmm. from the back, right? So we're going to put this over the edge of the table Perfect. from the back side. And then uh, you just get the knob from the front. So if I put that all the way in there without ruining everything, there you go. Um, <laughs> then it pokes out that, like that on the front, and you put the knob on, right? You do, and it's just as simple as as that. So you could do this, 
And I do recommend when you are customizing these and writing the names or the, the days of the week, you want to make sure that you put these on here first and I'll tell you why. Because when I was doing this, I, I did the day, like I did a Monday and I was like, oh, the uh, M or the N, uh, when it's screwed on. Looks like a W. It doesn't work. Upside down or yeah. sideways so or something like that. that. Is, so, and keep in mind, like the other ones that are on the side of it can be glued on. You can use a wood glue, you could use a hot glue. Okay. For that, awesome. and that would be really simple. Now, of course, the uh, the important part, uh, let's just assume that we've got all oh, yeah. the knobs attached mm -hmm. and we glue the other two like that. We've got to get the uh, the chalkboards to be able to attach to this. Uh, oh, yes, so here. that's as simple as this. So these are eye hooks. And so what I did here, this is the same thing I used, actually yep. the same thing that I used to do the, the um, hole with the drill, I did it at the top of the board, and I used an eye hook, and I just did this to have it go in. And, and you, you really want to do sure want to, to pre-drill those holes, otherwise it gets really tricky. Yeah, and if you want, if you get them in and they're not going in, you could use a little tool like this, and that will help with getting those on. And then yeah. after I did that, Cameron, I just grabbed some twine. This is going to go with whatever aesthetic that you have too. I grabbed some twine and just tied it on to both sides. And you can see over here, I tied it in, in a knot and just hung it over. So it just goes over the top, just like this. And this way you can take it down and say, okay, Grant, what do you want to eat on Wednesday? I want beef stew. Oh, good. Because so do I. And That's so then genius. it's there and you're all set for your days of the week. I really and love done. it. I love it. And you got to probably want to make sure that all your twine is exactly the same length so they're hanging equal yeah. so you don't have them all like that <laughs> along. That would drive me a little. You know quicker. what? Unless you want your look to look like. I know. So I mean, it's listen, listen, it's I'm all not good. here to judge. It's all good for sure. Now, in order to hang the entire thing oh. up on the wall, we probably would use a French cleat. A French cleat. Yeah. Okay, a French cleat. I was just going to say. This is also going to depend on where where you have this in your house, if you have it on a wall, if you just have it, you know, attached to, or if you have it uh, leaning up against something. So it really is going to depend on where you have it in your house and what kind of wall you're hanging it onto.